How are you? Oh, I am terrible. Yeah. Do you know how to do that? Bye. Bye. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hanging with Humans, episode, I think, 11 or 12. Um, that's because I, I skip around a lot. But I'm very pumped today because um, I'm at my best friend Freddie's house over here in Texas. And um, I'm here visiting my dear friend, but uh, he introduce me to Gianni, Gianni Beltran, right? Yeah. Gianni Beltran, say hello Gianni. Hi everyone, this is uh, Gianni. Um, so Gianni is 19 years old. Um, the reason uh, why we ended up crossing paths is because Freddie was picking me up from the airport and he's like, hey dude, I've met a lot of really cool people that uh, you, you should interview. And he's like going through the list and he's like, yeah, I got this kid. I've been kind of mentoring him. Uh, he just showed up at my house one day and uh, now we're, you know, this and this and this. And, um, you know, Freddie came, got me from the airport. We hung out in San Antonio with the family and we had a blast. Uh, highly recommend the Riverwalk. Um, and uh, when we got back, Johnny was uh, babysitting or, or you know, hanging out, house sitting for, for the time being we were gone. And I was like, how is this house not totally fucked up? And, uh, you know, pizza and kegs and, you know, the whole place destroyed. Well, it turns out Gianni is a good kid. So <laughs> that explains a lot. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's very nice to meet you, Johnny. Yeah, I appreciate it. Nice to meet you um, too. We're going to um, we're gonna interview Gianni and uh, uh, get to we're gonna finish off in basketball because uh, Gianni's a he's a stud high school basketball phenom sort of. Uh, well, he just graduated, but uh, before we get into all that, we're gonna find out who Gianni is as a person. Um, so. I'm very excited. So that being said, what's up, Johnny? How you doing today? I'm doing good. Just woke up. Just woke up. <laughs> um, so we're out here in McAllen, Texas. Um, you grew up here? Yeah, I grew up here. You grew up here? Um, I want you to tell me a little bit about your family. Um, you have how many brothers and sisters? I have three sisters and two brothers. Um, which one's your favorite? My favorite? Yeah. Um, probably my, my brother. Your brother? Yeah, my, my uh, brother, the second, old, uh, second youngest. What's his name? His name is Denzel. Denzel, why is he so awesome? I feel like it's because I, I grew up with him. Like, after everyone left the house and stuff, mm -hmm. um, he's the one who stayed there and like, well, we kind of like, you know, like he was, he was closest to me. I, I kind of like resonated most with him, so. Mm -hmm. You guys broed out? Yeah, but always fight a lot too, so. True, true facts. Um, so you are the youngest? Yeah, I'm the youngest. You're the youngest. How is that like being the youngest in a big family like that? I think the way my mom put it was just like, and I, I kind of saw it like when she said, she was like, well, at least you get to learn from like their mistakes, you know? Mm -hmm. So if anything like they done bad, like at least you get to like see like what not to do. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Um, do you feel you've done a lot of that personally? Like bad things? No, or, like uh, learn from their mistakes. Yeah, like definitely. Like yeah. there's, there's a bunch of things that like, well, like they've done, like even like minor things where I'd be like, oh, like at least I know like not to do that. And mm -hmm. yeah. just to stay away from that, or, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, that's awesome. Uh, all these brothers and sisters, um, tell me a little bit about your mother and your father. My mom, her name is Sulay Samora. She was born in uh, Reynosa, I believe. And when she was, I believe, like a teen or maybe maybe a bit younger, she, she moved to Brownsville. Um, and from there, she was actually, she, I believe she was born here. I'm not too sure, but um, she lived in Brownsville for a while and then she moved over here and that's how she met my father. My dad's name is uh, Ricardo Beltran. Um, I, he was born in, in Edinburgh, actually. Mm -hmm. And I guess he met my mom in like a convenience store or something like that. <laughs> Nice, that's nice. how everything happened. That's how that happened. Um, do you and your siblings all share the same uh, mother and father? 
Oh uh, no, uh, that's the thing. My my brother that I'm closest to, um, we we do share the same mother and father. Okay. And then I have a brother and a sister that are with a different mother from my mom. Okay. And my other two sisters are from uh, different fathers. Awesome. awesome. Both di- separate different fathers. Awesome. Awesome. Um, is everybody spread out, or are you guys everybody in Texas? Uh, everyone's in Texas currently. My sister, um, she she was in uh, New York, Albany. Mm-hmm. She said she like really liked it over there, but. Currently, everyone's everyone's here in the valley. Awesome, awesome. Uh, would you say you have a close family? <laughs> um, not really, um, but we do stay in touch. Like we're not like super like distant, you know. Mm-hmm. But we do stay in touch. Absolutely. Um, so we're gonna get to hooping eventually, but um, not sports related. Who were some of your heroes growing up? Like. Maybe some of the things they taught you could translate to sports, but mm-hmm. um, any role models or anything, who, who are the most important um, people in your life growing up? Um, I would say my, my brother's a, a big role model in my life. My, my brother, because every, everything he did was, was something like I like, kind of translated into. Like, so he first started playing football, I wanted to play football, and then he got hurt. And then he was like, yeah, I'm going to go, go play basketball yeah, yeah. in high school. Yeah. So he started playing basketball. And then he was, he was pretty good. Yeah. So I was like, I want to I wanna be good in basketball. So I started playing more and more. Just kept training, you know. And then he switched into, like, MMA. He wanted to learn um, fighting sports. And I translated into that. He wanted, to, he wanted to become a runner. I started running a lot, too. Like, so I feel like everything he did was yeah. something, like, I, I wanted to do, you know, just because he was an old brother. That's awesome. How many years apart? Uh, four years. Oh, okay. Yeah, me and my brother are three. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know you did MMA. Um, are you doing any of that training or anything like that currently? Um, I always uh, train by myself at the gym. Gotcha. Um, I used to train at, at UFC gym, and then I would train at um, uh, a place called uh, Wolfpack here okay. in, in Edinburgh mm-hmm. on University. Um, we would, I, would, I would train there for Muay Thai. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, are you training, like... Not to be a professional fighter, or do you train for like, I'm using this training to benefit me in other sports, or what was the? the I feel like it's it's both because I've always like found interest in like I get adrenaline when I see like people fight, mm-hmm. like especially like in UFC, like that's yeah. something that's always not always, but I feel like starting like like two years two years ago, like I started watching MMA with my brother a lot because mm-hmm. he got into it. And I was like, dude, this is like so fun to watch. And then I started like looking into fighters, yeah. their stories, and that's what got me into it more. Mm-hmm. So, I love that. Yeah, no, I'm a huge UFC guy. I throw like barbecues and have all my friends over. Uh, we all watch. Uh, I do the same thing too. It's the best. Yeah. Um, but no, I agree. Um, you never really see a lot of champions that come from a privileged background. No. It's always, they had a very rough or nothing Something was, to prove. Yeah, yeah, n- nothing was handed to them though. It was always like out of poverty. You had very little options, yeah. but there was always this option to get out. Yeah. Um, on my second episode of my podcast, I interview um, a buddy, Edgar. I, we got Capri Suns. Um, Cause Freddie closed the garage on us, so we're gonna sweat to death. Do you know what I was just saying a second ago? I don't know. I was, I was also going to say, there's a good quote by Alex Ramosi, and he says, um, motivation comes from deprivation. Ooh. And I've always kind of saw that as a good quote. Like, that, I was like, well, that makes, makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, actually. No, that's good. It's, it's so short and to the point, but it means so much. Um, yeah, no, I, I have a, a trailer when I very first started the podcast, yeah. and... I'm getting asked all these random questions, kind of the same way you from my mentor and he's like interviewing me and he's like, you know, the people that, you know, uh, influence you and, you know, motivate you. And like, for whatever reason, like Mike Tyson just came boom, like right away. And, um, his story is like nuts. Like he just, he had nothing and just fought his way all the way to be the baddest man on the planet, you know? And I always, cause I didn't come from a privileged background, you know? Yeah. So like, I always saw myself in a fight, like in terms of like getting this job or like getting accepted to this program or whatever. I'm yeah. like, well, I gotta fucking train for it. You know, like even if it wasn't a fight, I'm like, well, I gotta get dialed in for it. If I'm gonna show up, I better make sure I'm looking good and lean, you know? That's a really good quote. Cause 
that is the thing I wanted to do is I want to do quotes. Like I have a ton of them. They, they mean a lot to me. That I get a lot of motivation every day just from reading quotes, you know, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so your brother was a big influence. Um, uh, can you think of anybody else between now and where you're at today that's helped you like, you know, go in the direction you're going in? Yeah. Um, I have like a couple of, I have like a couple of, um, cause I don't really see like, like people that are like famous as like mm -hmm. role models, you know, Absolutely, yeah. but I do see like a bunch of people that are like local, like, mm -hmm. or people that were local. Cause I have a, I have a couple of people that I know that, um, well, most of the people that are like have money or not even money, but they have like, um, like there's someone, you know, mm -hmm. like they, they're, they're known in the Valley. Okay. Like they all have stories. Like they came from nothing yeah. or they lost everything at one point or, or yeah. they, they went into like a slump or something. And redemption. You know. Yeah. Redemption stories. Well, do you want to shout out anybody off the top of your head? Oh uh, yeah. I have, um, I have a friend. He owns a, a software company. I can't say his real name. That's all good. But his, his, um, his nickname is, uh, his nickname is, he goes by two. His name is, um, uh, David mm -hmm. or Bryson. Okay. I don't want to say his real name. Well, let's say Bryson David. Yeah. Tight. Yeah. And also, uh, I, uh, Andrew, Andrew, you, yeah, he, he owns a, a merchant service uh, business here. Okay. He has a, an amazing story. Yeah. 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 So those guys, you see what they've done, what they've built, and you go, okay, that's obtainable, yeah. or it motivates you. Yeah. That's good, man. That's good. Um, it's good. It's important to have six, not just successful people, not even success, successful, yeah. hungry people. Yeah. It's good to have hungry people. Yeah. Like, it's a dogfight out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, so since this podcast is about mental health, uh, in a way, um, I want to get your perspective on, you just graduated high school, yeah. right? When I went to high school and when my friend, my, my friend's kids are in high school and like, it's, it's crazy. The difference like uh, with technology and, and everything, yeah. um, <laughs> I've had issues with my own kids with, with stuff with like just having the iPad too much type yeah. stuff. But, um, from a high school male perspective um here in south texas what are things you see around you on an everyday basis that uh you're like oh this is what's wrong with today or the country or this place in particular what things do you do you think you can be like i could do without that i feel like social media definitely yeah i feel like social media has gotten to a point where like people just need like gratification from it, you know? Yeah. Like people just need to have someone else like like their photos or, or comment or like, I mean, girls are bad with this, I'm not gonna lie. But even even us guys, like we post up just to like get like our-, our Your, your new you Jordan, yeah. your new whip or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the biggest things like um, is just like learning when to, learning when there's a time for it, like a screen time. Yeah. Either like a couple couple minutes in the morning, a couple minutes in the middle of the day, a couple minutes at night, but not like three or four hours a day. Some yeah. Some people have real bad screen time. Yeah, people are obsessed, yeah. like literally obsessed. Um, I remember there, I was watching this thing on YouTube and they were like uh, interviewing these girls and like, hey, you can go on this trip, but yeah. you can't take your phone, but it's all paid for everything like that. So you can't take any pictures or videos or whatever. Or you just don't go and she's like, well, if I can't, you know, if I can't go document it or whatever, then she's like, what's the point of even going? I didn't even go because wow. everybody else thinks, you know, like that's how much she cared about what everybody else yeah. thinks is like, I'd rather pass on going to this really nice trip that's completely paid for and taken care of, but because I can't document it and post it for everybody to see, yeah. I'd rather not, which is insane to me. Yeah. Like if you're in that position, but, um, Maybe that's what these kids grow up to be. I don't know. <laughs> um, so how's that work in the dating game? Because like I'm out the game. I don't I don't know. But I feel like if everybody's so superficial and obsessed with likes and everything and yeah. taking pictures, it's got to be a hard thing to navigate through. Yeah. Is it? Um, I feel like I feel like it's it's easier. I feel like it's easier because you just get to like you get to like reach out like to anyone. Okay. 
Especially, like, imagine, like, back then, like, people couldn't, like, just, you'd have to actually, like, physically go and talk to the person. Now it's, like, people hide behind a screen, you know? And um, I'm more like an in-person type of, like, person. Like, I don't really, like... Yeah, using social media like when I'm out much if mm-hmm. there's pictures like of me it's usually like one of my friends are taking pictures yeah, or something yeah, else yeah, but yeah. Like, you usually never catch me taking like like pictures when I'm out or like with friends and stuff like that Definitely. it's more like you just have to like like live in the moment because it's just like it goes by too quick you know it does it really does go by too quick and you're 19 and you know that and yeah. some people don't find that out yeah. until way later on in life um so with that being said, um, uh, I wanted to see if uh, you'd be comfortable talking about, uh, since we're in relationships, um, a big impactful thing that happened with you and yours. Do you yeah. mind uh, speaking on that? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, well, I recently had like a, a girlfriend who passed away, and her name was J.D. Ruby Alcala Davila. She had a um, beautiful name. Yeah. That is so, um, yeah, I met her... I actually, I actually texted her online, right? I texted her online back in like my junior year, and well, like we we're texting for a bit, and then we just we we like stopped texting or whatever. Mm-hmm. And well, she sent me a a picture that she was at my school in the gym, um, like of the floor, I guess, of yeah. the logo. And I was like, oh, you're there. I was like, I'm literally like turning the corner, and I was with um, a friend, a friend of mine whose name is uh, George. Mm-hmm. And he was, I was like, oh, like, I'm gonna go talk to this girl. Like, I need, I just like, like, she's here. Like, I've been wanting like to meet her and stuff, yeah, but yeah. I never got the chance. And well, I walked into the gym and George was with me and I see her and then he goes, he goes and hugs her, right? <laughs> and I was like, oh, sh-, like, you my girl, or whatever. <laughs> but um, they ended up being siblings. And I found that out after and I was like, that's so weird. Oh, you thought the whole time. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so I found out after that, wow. that 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 they were siblings, like not but blood siblings, yeah, yeah, but yeah. like they like live together and stuff. So yeah, um, I was like, bro, like I got to like get to know her. I got to like like find out who she is and stuff. So we went on a couple of dates with him there, and then after that we started going out on our own. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Dang, that's awesome. Yeah, she passed away in um in uh like a how do you say like a one of those atv accidents oh yeah Yeah. side by side yeah yeah uh like a rollover situation is um yeah if you don't mind me asking was it like a uh a negligence thing like was it like drinking and she she, she, i believe her best friend was was the one driving okay yeah and she was she was she was a really cool girl yeah yeah um how's how long ago was this uh, this was, I'd say, about six months ago, six months probably, ago. probably five. That's very fresh. Yeah. Um, so her best friend, uh, how, I don't know if you guys are, how's she doing? Like, do you know any stuff like that about her? Her best friend? Yeah, her best her friend. Her best friend uh, passed away also. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, dang. Wow, that's gnarly, man. That's, yeah. And um, so that happened six months ago. You graduated how long ago? Um... About eight or nine, so that yeah, time goes by fast. Wow. Like, <laughs> so yeah, so she 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 passed away like right after high school, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, it is really crazy. Yeah. Um, so you guys were did did you guys have like plans or like what was your guys's um you know, where you were at? She was like super ambitious. Like she wanted to, at first she wanted to be a lawyer, right? And I was like, do you like really want to? And we're like talking to her mom, like joking about it and stuff, but. She was like, yeah, like, she's like, I'm pretty sure, like, I want to be a lawyer. And while her mom, her mom and I and JD and her, her little sister, Everlyn, were out yeah. um, at Olive Garden. And she was like, her mom was like, did, did she tell you, like, she switched her major? And I was like, no way. <laughs> uh, she wanted to go into, like, nursing, I believe. Yeah. Because she wanted to, like, switch it up. I, I think she, like, couldn't see herself as a lawyer anymore. So she was like, I'm going to go into nursing with her best friend, actually, who was also going right. to nursing and they were planning to go to Austin together. Damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good, man. That's a, a whole plan. They, they had this set up. Um, lawyer, dude. That's... I don't know. So there's my thing with that. Like, it would be hard to defend a guilty person. Yeah. You know You know yeah. what I mean? I don't know if that would have anything to play with it. But um, so that's all recently happened. Um, what's 
we can go. Uh, I want to kind of segue into the basketball part now. Yeah. Um, so when uh, when did you start playing basketball? Um, I started playing basketball in fourth grade. Fourth grade. Yeah. And it was because of my brother. Like, again, yeah. Yeah. My brother um, would always hoop outside, and he wanted to be like super good. Mm-hmm. He was the point guard of the team. Yeah. At uh, different schools, because he moved around, and well, I was just like, that looks fun. Mm-hmm. So I started hooping with him. He started training a little bit, and then from there, that's where I started getting on like travel teams and stuff. Okay. <clears throat> that's awesome. Um, did your did your mom like push you to play sports? No, like, my family, I, I believe, like, my mom and my brother, like, none of my siblings besides me and my brother, like, played sports, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I think it was just, like, more of an us thing, like, I think that's just how, like, me and my brother were raised, like, super physical. Yeah, yeah. Um, he would always, like, throw gloves at me, and he'd be like, bro, like, let's fight. Let's fight. And I'd always end up getting, like, beat up because he was four years older than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how that goes. I'm going to open this garage door because mm-hmm. we're cooking up in this thing. Cool. Fred, you set me up, dog. Yeah. Um, all right. That's going to be better for us. Ah, getting some air up in here. Um, <laughs> yeah, all right. So, hooping. Uh, you started hooping fourth grade. Your brother's the one who got you on board. Um, when did you realize that um, you could play competitively at, like, a high level? That you were better than, like, average kids, I guess. I think when I realized that I was better than average kids was not when I was like beating everyone here, but when I was like scoring like the m- more or even the same amount in like Houston and San Antonio, mm. I was like, bro, like I'm actually like pretty decent, you know, yeah, I'm yeah, against yeah. like these kids that are like six five mm-hmm. in like eighth grade. I was like, damn. Yeah. 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 No, the Houston's big on that, and so <laughs> kind of tell me. So with the with the social media thing, how we said it's a, a bad thing. Yeah. How do you feel? Um, I mean, there's some good parts to it, but um, how does it work in terms of like with sports and recruiting and like getting yourself out there? Is it like a different ball game than what it used to be? Because <clears throat> there's like phones everywhere yeah. and like so. What does it look like to to try to get your tape out there? Oh. Or do you have any of that stuff going on? I feel like not really like social media, but. Um, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of websites like Max Preps, Max Preps, um, NCAA or something like that, mm-hmm. where you could reach out to coaches and from there they could like, oh, okay. See if you're, oh, GPA so you send your own tape and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, you're power forward. Yeah. You're what? Six, three, six, two? like six, two, six, two, six, three. Oh. Uh, did you have a growth spurt or were you always a pretty big kid? I was always like growing normally, but I was always taller than everyone else, like a lot taller. Yeah. So when I was in, when I was in elementary, I was I was pretty tall. I was like five six, no shit, sure. or five seven. And then I grew to like five five ten, in like seventh grade. Yeah. And from there, I think my sophomore year I, I reached like my height or junior. So I was like six two. Gotcha, gotcha. And then I just started filling out from there. <laughs> I was super skinny as a kid. Yeah. Um, did you play? Did you play football team? No, just hoop. Just just hooped and I played everything but football actually. Really? Yeah, I did. I did swimming and and diving. I did tennis, um, golf, basketball, like everything else. Out of track. What do you love next basketball? Out of those. <clears throat> fighting for sure. Yeah. I, love I think fighting and basketball are like right there. Really? Yeah, super close. So if one doesn't work out, do you want to pursue the other? Or is that even a thing for you? Like, I know you're still young, yeah. options, but you yeah. graduated eight months ago. You yeah. have your whole life ahead of you. Yeah. If it were up to you, what, what path would you want to be taking right now? Obviously, fighting is like super risky. That's the thing. Like, if you if you want to go into like if you want to pursue fighting, like you have to be like all in. Like that has to be like the thing that like drives you, you know. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm not at that level, but I feel like there's there's a point where like I'm gonna like want to do that, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome, man. Um, best uh, best basketball game you've ever had in your life. <clears throat> wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's a good question. We could do a, let's do a, let's do a, your, a high school one. Okay, in yeah. high school. 
high school my best basketball game wow damn i get excited like talking about it i feel <laughs> like when we played when we played vela just because like there was so much like people there yeah like there were so much people there and we were so close like we didn't win but we almost won no actually is it a rival school um not really no. our rival school is bears okay. yeah they're they're like that way south but our rival school is beer, bears but actually i think my favorite game would be when we played econ because we were down by 13 with like a couple minutes left or like going into the last quarter and we caught up and we beat them yeah like buzzer beater <laughs> so like yeah that was that's probably one of my best games that was my junior year too so really that uh, was that was a game where i was excited after yeah. that because that one was full too yeah you just played out of your mind hell yeah <laughs> I love that. I love that. Can you uh, tell me some of your um, basketball honors you've earned uh, throughout the years? Mm -hmm. I earned uh, the thousand point mark, but I was basically like already like 16, 1700 points. Oh, really? So I did that and I got defensive player of the year. Um, what else? No. All district, uh, all area, I, b I believe. I should have got MVP, but something. I I believe it's like something's wrong with me. Yeah. I had like the best points, rebounds, or anything. So. There's a lot of politics in sports. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. Um, how much do you think that plays a part in um, like highly talented players that don't get to go to, you know, big schools here and this like that? How much do you think politics plays a part in that? I believe if you're good enough, like you could beat politics. Yeah. You get me? I get it. no, no, absolutely, yeah. You gotta have to, you gotta have that fire in you, no yeah. matter what, you know. Yeah. And that's why I think like the privilege doesn't treat those champions, right? Yeah. It's because they don't face those obstacles, right? You go to whatever school you want to, you know, yeah. play for the best coach ever. Don't yeah. worry about it, you know. But not everybody has that option. <laughs> um, I talked to a good friend of mine on the podcast. He drove. Well, we grew up in California, but he drove through Montana. And uh, he was getting recruited to go play quarterback. At the time, Pete Carroll, Seahawks coach who just yeah. retired, was at um, USC, University of Southern California. And he was getting recruited to go play there yeah. in junior year, or like sophomore year, I think, um, of high school. And, uh, but he couldn't go do that because he was about to have his second baby at 16 years old because he was like running around the streets. Cause yeah. That's all he knew. There's nothing, you know, there he didn't have any other options. So um, do you see a lot of other talented players around, you know, maybe just around you or whatever that like, if they didn't have this, you know, obstacle, damn, man, they'd be just Definitely. like killing it. A, a lot of people from the Valley actually. Um, I don't want to say names, but there's, there's a couple that just didn't make it just because I believe like they weren't. Well, they were obviously told, like, uh, grades are important, but mm. they didn't, like, really, like, no one really, like, helped them, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. like, they would always be failing classes and stuff. Even, like, from other schools, like, I would, like, recognize that there was people that were, like, doing good or yeah. even also, like, um, some kids who, like, let the their rankings get to their head. Like, oh, oh like, I'm top five. Oh, wow. Like, I'm good. And they would, like, not work out or, or not train and stuff. And that yes. plays a big role, too, you know? Yeah, <clears throat> especially if you're like one of those freshmen that barely like come into the sport and yeah. you're like a freshman on varsity and stuff, mm -hmm. like you got to keep working at it. <clears throat> yeah, thinking that you're better than everybody. Um, have you ever seen, oh, it's on Netflix. It's like a football. Basically, there's like a junior college and they follow it like a uh, documentary style. Last Chance You? Last Chance You, yeah. yeah. Um, like there's a lot of that stuff type stuff, right? Where... Um, there's, that's why it's the last chance to use because those guys they went to those big schools and then they fucked off and they failed a drug test or they weren't studying or whatever um, I don't know where I was going with that but um, okay so you and Freddie meeting how did uh, how did tell me that, that how that went down well actually straight out of high school I was like damn I need money bro so I started I started seeing videos of like people like door knocking houses and stuff and doing like either like pressure washing or window cleaning and while I was getting, oh actually I was getting my realtor's license, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was getting my real, real estate license but um, they didn't tell me that I had to pay like a thousand or like 500 or something like that. Um, 
to keep to activate my license and get like my my um association fees and all that like mm -hmm. whatever and it was like a thousand bucks so i started door knocking like a bunch of houses um window cleaning and well i paid it off and stuff so i knocked on freddie's door yeah, yeah. and from there like he was like i told him like my story and stuff that i was like trying to get my real estate license he was like bro i'm a realtor <laughs> yeah. and i was like oh damn <laughs> so um we started talking he was like you know what like i'll pay you so he paid me like a certain amount i think it was like 160 180 to clean all the windows and stuff yeah um but yeah like that's how that's how i met him he gave me his card i spoke to boone which is our our broker and from there like i joined his team and then we just became friends you know that's awesome man hell yeah yeah freddie's the man um so right now you're 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 doing that is that a is real estate is that what you want to do the rest of your life is that something uh you've been passionate about are you as passionate mm -hmm. Uh, about it as basketball or MMA or anything like that? Uh -huh. I feel like everything that goes around a sales job is like you basically like create your own worth. Mm -hmm. So like if you like don't work, like you don't make money, you know? But if you do, you make money. But people are like intrinsically lazy, like all of us are. Mm -hmm. And we have those days where we don't want to like do anything, and, you know? Yep, yep. absolutely. And uh, you're like especially if uh, if you're training towards like another goal right yeah. like so i i bartend and then i do the podcast yeah i do that because i can go anywhere you know do that and then oh i can get hired at this bar over here go do that and i can travel with it so i can go talk to people in texas talk to people in kansas um yeah. is the real estate thing going to be something that you want to do while you pursue other ventures I feel like my main thing is creating like a business like because I've always been into like online business and mm -hmm. stuff but I was like dude I don't think it's possible so um when I started talking to uh Ax uh I don't want to say his name <laughs> I keep trying to like going around his name Ralph. but his name uh let's say Bryson right his name, yep yep his Twitter name is Bryson Bryson Till follow Bryson Till. Bryson Till um he has a software company it's called Superwave mm -hmm. and he's scaling it to like five mil already and he's a 23 year old doing it yeah so when he told me like he's doing all that i was like dude that's crazy yeah like he's like it's like super hard work i'll give you like the layout and stuff but i feel like that's when like my mind should like that's what i want to do but like i also like like fighting and basketball mm -hmm. and all this stuff but i don't want to be like mixed in through like everything you know i just want to choose like two things yeah and you have a long time to make make up your mind anyways yeah. you know so that's awesome, man. Um, I'm going to go into some just random questions for you. Yeah. And uh, we'll kind of finish off there and then we'll do some shout outs and whatnot. Yeah. Um, let's start with, I have some cool ones that I like. <laughs> um, what truths do you live on? truths do i live on what truths do you live on i believe i'm starting to see this like a lot but um building trust within yourself because there's a bunch of people like freddie freddie's so good at this and he like he like corrected my mind on this like so so much but he was like bro don't tell someone you're gonna do something and then don't do it or don't tell yourself you're gonna do something and don't do it and that's like one of the biggest things because like, if you believe you could do something, you could, like, that's already, like, halfway. And if you tell yourself you're going to do something and you do it, like, you start building trust within yourself and you start believing, like, you could do things. Mm -hmm. And, well, if you tell yourself, I'm going to read, like, this 25-page book and you read it, like, you start, like, okay, like, I could, I like, do really do anything I want, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. On the other side of that, too, with other people, how, um, how many people are a man of their word? I don't see like on day to day interactions. I mean, personally, yeah. there's a lot of that, like, oh, hey, I'll be over there. And then nobody shows up or, you know, a lot yeah. of that. So I think it's one of the most important things to to stand on that. You know what I mean? Like if you say you're going to be there, you know, go there. If you yeah. say you're going to do the work, you can do the work, do the work. That's a good answer, man. Um, tell me. Are people. Um, <clears throat> Are people born good and evil? 
or do you think that is something that uh, can come later on in life? I feel something? like people are born, it, it goes both ways, you know? Cause there's some people who like, like scientifically, like their brain doesn't work the same, you know? Mm -hmm. Like people that are like serial killers and like all those things, yeah. like people, some people I believe are born like different, but it's the actions that came through their life that made them do like the things they did. You get me? Mm, I agree. A big part of it. Um, what are you most thankful for in this life? Jesus died for us. Hi. And also like our parents. Well, my parents too, they're, they're a big um, impact on my life that they're still here and stuff. And just, just having time to like actually be with them because a bunch of people don't have that. Yeah. Very true. Are you living up to your goals right now? I believe I, I strive to like reach my goals, but like I said with Freddie, like he's, he's always telling me like, don't tell yourself you're going to do something and don't do it. That's like one of the biggest things. Good. That's a good one. <laughs> um, what's the biggest lesson you've ever learned in your life? To love people like there's no tomorrow, truly. And I learned that because of my girlfriend. That's good, man. That's great. Right. Things get taken away so easily. Life is very short. Yeah. You never know. If you could change one thing about your past, what would that be? I believe I would say just staying true to yourself. That's one of the biggest things. Like just just believing in like what you could do. Like, there's no point in not believing what you could do. If, if you believe, like, there's no, it makes no difference if you believe or if you don't. So if, if, you, if you truly believe you could do something, like, it's more than likely to happen. Like, you have one life, so might as well, like, believe in what, you're, what you want to do and go all in. How much does the outside noise and chatter affect that? I believe everyone has their own opinion, but all the people that started off with no money or at the bottom, they don't. They're all getting hated on, you know? Yep, absolutely. So it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. It doesn't really affect. Sure. Mm. Um, would you take the internet away or would you leave it in? Like if I could? Huh? Like if I could? If you could. I would, I would say leave it. Yeah. Because that would just give me separation. <laughs> like it just gives me separation from everyone else actually using it. Yep. Um, do you think two specific people are made for each other? I believe everything happens for a reason. As but do I. I would say that certain people do match with other people. Yeah. And it's, it shows. Definitely. Yeah. You're very aware. Um, if you were to die three days from now, what would you do in these last three days? most important things you would want to accomplish? Probably like rob a bank or something. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, I would, I would, obviously, I would, I feel like I would like talk to everyone or have like a big like party and something. Maybe. I'd probably like sell my whip. <laughs> I'd sell my whip, like get something like smaller or whatever. Yeah. And I just like have a ball like somewhere. Just like I'd, I'd take a trip to like, like San Antonio, Houston or Austin or something. You know? It'll turn up. For sure. <laughs> um, you believe in aliens? Oh, my, my dad actually has a story about, I, I, I'm down for you yeah. to tell it if you, if you. I feel like aliens, like there's, there's some evidence, you know? Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like, damn. And my dad said that one time he was in Cancun with my mom mm -hmm. when they were together, yeah. um, that he saw like, uh, he saw like a light cause he was drinking and stuff, but he saw like a light in the, in the sky and he was like, what the hell is that? And he, he said like, it just did like a Z and then like, like it just took off. So he's like, he, <laughs> after that, he was like, bro, like they're real. Bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I, bro, I've, I got a lot of stories like that. No lie. That's funny. Uh, do you, are our destinies predetermined? For sure. I feel like <laughs> it's so weird, like how to explain it, but I feel like everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. and God just like, lays it out for you to show you that like you made your own decisions in life and he's like this is like where you're destined to be because of your actions you know so most people get like caught into like their like oh um 
why did God like choose me or like um, why why do certain people go to hell? It's like mm. you chose to be separate from from God. You get me? Yeah. So it's like I feel like this whole life of ours is just just to like it's just like a test, you know. That's and I, that's what I believe. Definitely. Um, what are you avoiding in your life right now? I feel like I'm avoiding like responsibility a lot, you know. But I'm starting. That's that's what I've been like avoiding, like responsibility, like to like do things and like go out and you know. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's where like my mindset's kind of shifting. Like I'm starting to like actually like, like like do a bunch of things that I wouldn't normally do, you know. Stepping outside yeah. your comfort zone. Um, we'll get a couple more questions and we'll get yeah, out. Sure. Um, what is um. <clears throat> What's going to matter to you most when you're laying on your deathbed? Wow, that's a good question. I feel like the impact that I had on other people would probably be the most important thing. Like not what I did, but who I impacted, you know? That's really good. And also just being known for like creating something or like leaving like behind like like this podcast, that's like, you know? Yeah, man. Speaking my language right now. <laughs> um, so I know you don't really look up to or, or have those motivating idols like that, but yeah. like out of just on some basketball yeah. shit, though, like what hoopers do you like? Hoopers? Well, yeah, what, uh, well, who would you say your game is kind of closest to in the end? I feel like Giannis. Yeah. I love Giannis. I, if I were to say anyone would be my favorite, probably be him. Yeah. Just because of his. His story too, and mm -hmm. when it actually comes to like performing, like he always shows up. He always shows up, yeah. He's a monster. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about he keeps all of his brothers on the team though, taking up all the slots? I don't, I don't give a shit. But I don't care. Yeah. Like people, people make fun of like the honest and stuff, but he's a compared to like us, he's like he's way better. Like, oh yeah, 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 come on, but um, yeah, yeah. I, I believe like if. It helps him do better, mm -hmm. like. Right. Why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. yeah, no. A lot of people be hating. One of the one of the best players in the league. Like. Yeah, he'll he'll go down as one of the greatest to ever for play sure. the game for sure. Absolutely. Um, did you ever see that interview where they're asking questions? And they're like, "Hey, was this season a failure?" And then he just starts going off on the uh, reporter. Yeah. Oh, dude. I, I think that. I think I know which one you're talking about, where he's like. <sighs> Where he was like, I forgot what he said. I think they got bounced from the playoffs or something in the first round, maybe, yeah. or something. Yeah, I, I do remember that interview when he got mad. And, and he was like, what do you mean, was it? And he's like going into like the ins and outs and the details yeah. of the seat. And I was just like, that people think like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah uh, so before we, we, we ship this thing off, um, I'll give you the floor. Um, if there's any people you want to thank in your life uh, thus far to help you get to to where you're at, um, and um, yeah, uh, any any shout outs or any you know dedications or whatever. Definitely. Now's your chance to, uh, to do that, bro. There's a bunch of people I want to shout out. Um, yeah. Give a shout out, obviously, to like my parents, uh, my mom and dad, um, my a, my siblings for sure. Um, even though we're not like super in touch, like I grew up with them and. I love all of them. Um, um, my brother Denzel, my brother Ulysses, um, my sister Tanya, Anna, Jackie. Those are my siblings. Um, I, I love them like always. My my mom, my dad. Um, who else? Um, Freddie was a big one. Mm -hmm. You know. You can finish your shout outs. Freddie's just hey, you're here for the shout outs. Come on in. He was just about to thank you. Uh, Shout out, shout out to Freddie. It's all possible. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> my gym. This, is, this is his gym. Um, the light different through a the way. I know, you should have been in here with, it was closed though. It was legit a sauna, we were sweating like crazy. We'll just, you know, this is edited out. Sorry, uh, continue my mans. Yeah. Who are we thanking? We're thanking uh, your parents whom you love yeah. so much. My parents, my siblings. Um, Give a shout out to uh, the people who I work with, like Freddie, Juan, Curleen, um, Andrew Hughes, one of one of um, one of the big ones too, because I go to a Bible study with him on Thursdays, 
and that kind of like pulled me closer to God, mm -hmm. you know? So I want to give a shout out to him, um, Bryson Till. Bryson Till. Big shout out to Bryson. Um, he's a definition of hard worker. Yeah. For sure. Like, he would tell me like, dude, I, when I started this company, like 16 hour shifts, 24 hour shifts, like, like that is not pretty raw. And now, like, he's reaping his reward and stuff. Exactly. You know? Give a shout out to my friends, you know, David, Marcus, Tristan, Ethan, um, Ryan, Ricky, Isaac. Uh, damn, I got so much. All the homies. Alexis, all the homies, bro. I love, I love y'all. Without friends, um, life would not be fun, you know? And if I miss anyone else, promise I didn't. Just... <laughs> Hell just yeah. can't think of them on top of my head but um i appreciate everyone you know life wouldn't be good without friends or family facts bro jackie thank you bro i appreciate sure. you and um yeah if you want to if people want to look you up and see some of your hoop stuff yeah uh highlights and whatnot what or your handles your <clears throat> instagram all that you want to yeah for sure my instagram is gianni beltran g-i-a Double N I B E L T R A N with three N's at the end. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, go peep my boy out and uh, thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate for you. For sure. And uh, <sighs> let's definitely, uh, we'll link next time I'm in Texas, bro. And I'll check up on you. Maybe we'll do another one. For sure. All right, everybody. We'll see y'all later. Peace.